Hey everybody, it's great to see you today. Welcome to Living Power, your online Bible study where we are walking through the Bible in a year. Today is August 19th and we are studying the book of Ezekiel. Today's lesson is entitled God's Great Persistence. I was so uh, overtaken with the persistence that the Lord has in pursuing his people. And today we read about that in Ezekiel 14 verse 5. It says, I will do this to capture the heart and the minds of my people who have turned from me. The Lord is an amazing God in so many ways, one of which is that he has this amazing long-suffering and persistence that he would pursue you and that he would pursue me. He's pursuing the people that we know, that our family members that seem lost at this point. He is yet in pursuit of them drawing them to him just as he has wooed us and drawn us to himself. Praise be to God that we have a God that loves us that much and that desires fellowship with us that much that he would continue to persist day after day and year after year. You know, praise the Lord that if you are someone that has turned to the Lord early in your life and that you've known Him from a very young age, praise God. We also have to praise the Lord for His persistence in a person that comes to know the Lord at a very old age, perhaps on their deathbed. And we have to recognize it as a mystery the grace of God, that he would even accept that person that had perhaps been so far away from God his whole life, pushed God away, but yet at that very last moment, in his last dying breath, would call on the name of the Lord. Even that person could be saved. Our God has his grace and his mercy and his compassion is so deep. We may just never be able to understand the love of the Lord this side of heaven. But scripture tells us that one day we will be changed and we will come to know the Lord as fully as we are known by him today. And that, that is just a wonderful promise. And that made me... That's, that's what this verse, Ezekiel 14, 5, made me, made me think about today. God's great persistence that he is pursuing you this day, and he is pursuing me. You know, there's another theme that I am uh, drawn to recall from the reading today, and that is about sin. You know, Paul talks about in the New Testament, Testament that we are to stop sinning. You don't hear a whole lot from the pulpit about stop sinning and that we can live a sinless life, but the Bible tells us that we can. It has to do with having the Holy Spirit to enable us to do that and that there are certain things in our life that we are supposed to just stop, lay down, turn from, and walk away from. Ezekiel here in the Old Testament tells us that we are to stop sinning and I love to find those parallels between the Old Testament and the New Testament. You know, how do you do it? You repent, you turn, and you stop. So if there is something in your life today that you know you need to stop doing, but you just haven't done it yet, I want to encourage you from the multiple passages in the Bible that say just to stop sinning, you can let go with the power of the Holy Spirit whatever you feel like has, has you in its grasp. You can stop sinning and you can live a sinless life. In fact, that is the goal of every Christian. Now in Ezekiel verse uh, chapter 15, uh, it's entitled Jerusalem, a useless vine. And we like to find in this class references that parallel the Old and the New Testament. Jesus in his life on earth used the term and, and taught about the vine a lot. This is where he got that, Ezekiel 15, where it was uh, uh, the, the vine was used metaphorically to describe Jerusalem as a useless vine. And Jesus talked about that 
at, during his time on earth as well. Now, Ezekiel 16 isn't real fun reading, um, I have to say. It is difficult reading because it talks about Jerusalem living a life of adultery and adultery against the Lord. And it goes as far as saying, you have been so eager for sin that you haven't even demanded payment in your sin and you pay them. And I just found that to be such a remarkable description of the entanglements of sin and how sometimes we can get so caught up in things that we think are good, things that maybe were purposed to be good, but how we can chase after things that God made rather than chasing on the one who made them, God himself. And it referenced Sodom. You remember Sodom and Gomorrah? It referenced Sodom's sin in Ezekiel 16, verse 49 today. And Ezekiel told us today a reason for Sodom's destruction. Here it says, Sodom's sins were pride, gluttony, and laziness, while the poor and needy suffered outside of her door. And I just feel called for us today to stop for a moment and, as the Psalms say, Salah, S-E-L-A-H, Salah. That means to stop and meditate and think about this for just a minute. Could this be said of our nation today? We're such a prosperous nation. We have more of the world's resources. We consume a quarter of the world's resources globally. We are such a prosperous nation. We have more materialistically than, um, than many, many nations around the world. Could it be said of us that we are prideful, gluttonous, lazy? Do we ignore the poor and needy outside of our door? So may it be said that that cannot be true of you and me. But it's just a call to remember that all of the material blessings that we receive from the Lord are His and not ours. All of the things that the Lord gives us in our life are to be used for good and to be used to be a blessing toward others. All of the things that the Lord gives us are not to be used for our own good pleasure. Now that's not to say that some of it can't be used for pleasure, for the Lord desires for us to enjoy life and be happy. Of course, He desires to bless. But I believe that there is a balance that the Lord wants us to pursue in our life. Not to take, 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 and to consume and to use everything that we have for ourselves. But are we being careful to tithe and to give back to the Lord and to steward our time and our money and our resources for the benefit of others in addition to ourselves. We have been blessed beyond measure in this country and we have to make sure that we are not ignoring the widow and the orphan and the poor and the needy, not turning a blind eye or a deaf ear, but to seek them out and to find out where they are for they really, truly are all around us. We just need the Lord to open up our eyes and show us how we can be a blessing to others. The, the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah were certainly many and far-reaching. But here we see that the simple sins, the sins that sometimes elude us and that we don't even realize are part of our life, pride, gluttony, and those sins of omission where we forget to assist others and we forget to help the poor and needy are calling out to us today for us not to repeat those as well. Look at what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. In verse 50, she was proud and committed detestable sins so I wiped her out, as you have seen. 
Let that not be said of our country today. Let that not be said of the, the Christians, you and me in this country, that we would seek to be blessed, to be a blessing to other people, and that we would honor the Lord in all that he has given us in this way. Well, I pray that this has been a blessing to you and a thought-provoking lesson to perhaps uh, get, get us to think about uh, ways that we can be used by the Lord that we've not even yet considered. I, I pray that this lesson applies to you in your life today and that this reading uh, from the ages from Ezekiel would speak to our hearts. Blessings to you this day. Peace and shalom.